Ms. Pike, thank you for being here. Your testimony states that Congress has the opportunity to uphold the federal trust responsibility by protecting Oak Flat. Can you expand on why the Oak Flat Land Exchange is at odds with our trust responsibility to Native people, specifically uh, the Apache? I think that um, Tonto National Forest's lack of trust responsibility was the lack of not consulting with the St. Carlos Apache tribes in regards of to the land transfer. Um, as you can already see with Oak Flat, Chichil this is already a lack of responsibility of protecting our religion, protecting our natural resources, and protecting the St. Carlos Apache tribe and their future and welfare of who we are. And so, this consultation has never happened between the tribe and Resolution Copper and Tonto National Forest. In the DEIS, the St. Carlos Apache tribe is only mentioned three times. That right there shows the lack of how important we are and not only looking at us as a present and future people, but looking at us as a past history. Thank you, Ms. Pike. Um, uh, Mr. Dossi, in your testimony, you described the permanent damage that Resolution Copper's proposed mine would have on Oak Flat area, which includes destruction of land, water, plants, and animals, all living things to which Apache people hold a deep spiritual and symbiotic connection with. Can you please tell us how future generations would be impacted if this sacred site were to be permanently destroyed? The example I can give you is, is what people practice with their Holy Bible. We talk about these sacred sites in the other side of the world where gifts were given. Well, it's identical here. There's no different. And so if you have the sacred mound collapsing, subsiding into just a big hole, then what does it do for the rest of our kids that are yet to be born? It takes away from the language, the ceremony, uh, the religious ways that we see the way God had placed his hand on the world here. So how do you describe and how do you say that? And so what we see is a forever uh, desecration to never ever return and it will harm our children forever. And it will it'll totally make a different, it will totally impact the surrounding area because not only native people, but people have come to this holy place and have felt it itself. So you can hear that from many non-Indians of America as well because when you know who God is, then you feel the presence of where it's at. Thank you, Mr. Nosey. Mr. Alice, as you pointed out in your testimony, Oak Flat is listed on the National Register for Historic Properties. Can you elaborate on why the National Historic Preservation Act is so important to tribal nations? Yes, thank you, Chairman. Great question. So it recognizes the importance of it protecting and preserving cultural heritage and tribal nations. Not only is it listed on the National Historic Preservation Act um, uh, list, but it's, it's a, a, a TCP. Okay, and, and what that means is that it is very unique property. Okay, it's a unique location that, that recognizes the roots to a community's history. Okay, that's important for maintaining that community's history and their cultural and religious identity. And it means it's alive, okay, that the, 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 the practices and beliefs that attached to that location are still going on today. They're alive and well, and, and why this really needs to be protected. These aren't things that once happened there. These are things that have happened there forever and continue to happen today, and why that's really important to preserving this particular location. Considering that it is a, a TCP, traditional cultural property, and, and the federal government has explicitly recognized it as such, isn't, it, isn't the obligation of the federal government then to protect it in your opinion? Or is there an obligation for them to do that? Absolutely. In, in the uh, trust and fiduciary responsibility that the United States has to Indian country in protecting, as I mentioned in my testimony, <clears throat> lands, rights, cultures, and traditions, this is at the heart of that. And, and if we're not paying attention to this, and if the United States isn't respecting this and recognizing the significance of what this act would do and how it would harm and the precedence that it would set in, in, in how these sacred sites and, and how Indian country looks at these, uh, if we're not paying attention to that, that's significant long-term damage uh, that cannot be repaired. As we heard in the testimony, once this is gone, it is gone. It is not coming back. These sites aren't movable or transferable. They are where they are for a reason. Thank you, Ms. Alice. Now I yield to Representative Holland. 